let's say you charge $15 for a dozen and you've made $30, but you've spent $600. If that was you, would you keep paying that blogger? Would you keep pay paying that blogger going, let's see, maybe if I pay you another $600, I'll make another $30? No, you would be wise and you would cut back and go, this isn't worth it. And it wouldn't matter how fluffy and pretty and nice and convincing that blogger was. She might have the best of intentions. If she's not selling, that's not a smart business model. So for all of you who are bloggers, who are saying, I'm making a good amount of money on sponsored posts. I'm going to stick with that. Inevitably, those things will dry up. And if you start to look around the industry and you look at people who are really making great money in the, like, let's just use the fitness, health and wellness space. Okay. If you look at people who have made a solid living, very few of them are doing a lot of sponsored posts. Why? Because they've smartened up to realize that they've built an audience, they have built influence, and they make more money selling a product or service that they have made than saying, hey, here's what I'm gonna do for Quaker Oats. Like Quaker Oats comes to you and says, I'm gonna pay you $2,500 to do a blog post. The amount of work that you'll do to put into that blog post that your audience is gonna kind of look at like, well, she's obviously working with Quaker Oats. It doesn't mean they might not love it, but you know, ultimately you've, you've worked so hard to build your audience. When you think about sponsored posts that are one-offs, the amount of work you do for the, for the return that you're gonna get and the promise of work in the future, it doesn't add up. And so most people who are smart, savvy business people will see that the best decisions you can make when you are already active in, in a space, you have a blog, you've got influence. And, and even if you don't have a blog, um, for those of you that are watching, if you don't have a blog, don't worry. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that you, you have a huge disadvantage here. But you can absolutely be smart and be savvy and say, okay, I've got this audience. What makes the most sense for me to be making money here? Think about the people who have developed their own ebooks of workouts and are selling them, their own ebooks of cookbooks. Most smart and savvy, and, and the people that are making really good money, and some of them might surprise you. They've figured out that getting sponsored work from brands doesn't last, it is not something to rely on. When that's what you make the most of your money with, in this day and age, out of all the things that you could do, and I encourage all of you to have multiple streams of income, and I'll go into at the end, I'll wrap this up, and when I say, what, could, what does multiple streams of income look like? I'll wrap that up. We're talking about affiliate income. We're talking about ad income. We're talking about maybe two or three network marketing companies, having your own products, having your own email newsletter, you know, marketing opportunities. Those are the types of things we're talking about here. I have seen, and sometimes it just gives me like the chills when I see a blogger who is choosing to make a lot of money from a shit ton of sponsored posts because everything they put out is ad, sponsored, ad, and it's cheesy and it's written in ad and, and you can tell it's written in the way that the brand wants you to write. And it just makes those of us that know you and that follow you go, Literally, like everything you put out is you on QVC. Now, you might be listening to me because I'm always able to put myself in your shoes. I'm always able to put myself in the average person's shoes. You might be listening to me going, well, Kelly, if that's the case, you know, why would I want to then join a network marketing company where I have to sell somebody else's product? I'll get to that in a second. It's completely different because when you choose if you are to choose a network marketing company, you're choosing something that you are investing your time and, and some of your money into for a long-term opportunity. You are not getting involved. Ideally, you are gonna research a company that is a good fit for you, it's a good fit for your audience because the beautiful thing about network marketing, and I'm gonna describe this with an analogy of cardio versus strength training in a second. The beautiful thing about network marketing is the opportunity to earn residual and cumulative income. So income that grows. 
Whereas when you work and you do a bunch of sponsored posts, you do a one-off post for this brand. It doesn't perform well. They'll never work with you again. So then you're forced to go out and do a lot of work, chasing a lot of brands, negotiating, and you're, you're working with all these different brands and you become a brand whore and you're working with all these different things and people are like, oh, here she is. Last year, she was promoting polar heart rate monitors. Now it's Timex. Now it's Garmin. Whoever gives her a free one, she'll promote it or shoes or whatever. Or, oh, first she was doing this mud race. Now she's doing Spartan. Now she's doing Warrior Dash. Whoever gives her a free one, she'll promote it. If you're being smart with the network marketing company, you will pick one network marketing company and you will stay with them for the long term because when you do that, you are building a residual cumulative income that grows. It grows and grows and grows. That's why that's smart. And when you choose a company like me, I chose Isogenics because I'm like, first of all, I ordered the products. I tried the products. They had a remarkable, huge impact on my health. I was having bloating, um, elimination problems, feeling like just bloaty and gassy all the time. And I get these products and within a week, I did a whole YouTube video on this. Within a week, all the issues that for some reason I couldn't solve myself, they were gone. And then I realized like, oh my God, they have this product, they have this product. You know, I mean, we probably order, uh, I don't know, four or $500 worth of product every month, but it's tax deductible now. It's a business expense. Like it's just, it just makes sense. I was spending that at a different store. Now I'm spending it here because their, their, their products are so quality. They're in alignment with the types of things I've been preaching about forever. Probiotics, digestive enzymes, uh, vitamins every day, CoQ enzyme 10, fish oil, um, plant-based protein, sucralose-free protein, um, plant-based protein bars. Um, I have my organic greens every morning. I have adaptogens. That's stuff I've been taking for years. This makes sense. That's why I could talk about it. Look, I'm just naturally talking about it in this podcast. I'm sharing it with you because I, without question, can recommend it to literally Everyone I talk to, because if you want to be healthier, if you want to lose weight, there are no, you should be taking all of these products. And by no means will I say that this is the only company that offers high quality. Are there other plant-based proteins out there that have su no sucralose? Absolutely. There's more of them every day. Are there other companies that make organic greens? Absolutely. But I chose this company. I believe in their founders. I believe in their products. I've tasted them. I like how they, the vibe is there. The compensation plan rewards me. And this is where I'm like tying my anchor to. And let me just tell you, you watch me. I will be still talking about this company and these products a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. And my income will grow accordingly, just like my team is growing accordingly. So let's just wrap up the blogger influencer part of this, because this is really important. And quite a lot of you um, who are bloggers and influencers really need to just be aware. This is why it's a good idea to consider as one of your streams of income, joining a network marketing company that's a fit for you. Because if you are relying on sponsored content and doing a lot of it, number one, the amount of work you put out versus the money you take in, it's not worth it. And if you are going to get distracted by having a good month and going, wow, I brought in four grand this month. If you think you can predictably bring in four grand and make $50,000 a year blogging, you probably could, but you could probably take that same amount of effort and be making double that in one network marketing company without question you choose the right compensation plan and the right company and wouldn't it make sense to pour all of your efforts into something that's that's more natural and easy versus going oh i got to set up all these props i've got to make you know something with oatmeal and then next month i've got to how do i promote these weird walking shoes it just it's it's a more natural fit when you choose something that's really a vibe, a natural vibe for you. Like if you're really into makeup and you're also, it, it's very natural for you to be talking about, look, the makeup that we put on our face, our skin is our largest organ. Um, when we put makeup on our face, it directly enters our bloodstream. If you're talking about makeup, if you have a beauty blog, beauty counter, a company like that, that's just a perfect fit for you. Or it could be a perfect fit. I have a lot of my fitness people who are beauty counter reps because they're talking about label reading when it comes to food. And so for them, when they do a, a feature and say, what makeup do I use? 
then they, they talk about their skincare and they talk about makeup and they say, this is why I use beauty counter because of the purity of the ingredients. It vibes with the purity of ingredients I aim for in my food. See what I'm saying? It's completely different than working with brands. And furthermore, the biggest thing to remember when working with brands, it is not sustainable. If a brand is paying you and you say, oh, I've been working with this brand for two years and now they're paying me this, inevitably, and it means it usually has nothing to do with you, inevitably budgets will get cut, somebody will get fired, a new person will come in and they won't like you anymore and suddenly that gig is gone. And then you have to replace it. I've had bloggers who were working with protein powder companies that were paying them five, some of them even $10,000 a month. And then bam, that person got fired and they lost the job. So all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I was getting paid $5,000 a month and now they have nothing. When you have a network marketing company, typically, now some of them have absolutely gone belly up. Some of them have been acquired, whatever. But that is not the norm. And it's also not the norm if you choose the right company that's been around for years and years and years and has a solid, um, you know, solid annual revenue. You know, that's where you do your research. But that's not the type of thing that, you know, the beautiful thing about joining a network marketing uh, company as one of your streams of income, you can't get fired. The beautiful thing about joining a network marketing company is there's no discrepancy in pay. There's no wage gap. A guy who sells X amount of, product is going to get paid the exact same commission as a woman. There's no disparity there. So you can't get fired. You, there's no limits to your earnings and uh, there's no disparity in wages. Those are three beautiful things. There are limits to your earnings in corporate America. There are absolutely limits to working with brands, even if you are a brand ambassador. And I can guarantee you, any of you that are working on an affiliate or commission basis with supplement company A or supplement company B, there is no way you are making the amount of money you could make doing the same thing you're doing for them in a network marketing organization. You would make two to three times more per year is my predicted estimate, period. I see it all the time. I've seen several of these um, supplement companies. I don't want to mention any names because some of you, I might, be, I might be reaching out to you that work for some of them and going, you need to watch this. I don't want to name call but I've seen some of them go, you could earn up to a thousand dollars a month. Really? What if you could earn up to $10,000 a month or up to a hundred thousand dollars a month? Those are real. If you're a hustler, if you're willing to kick ass, can you make $10,000 a month in network marketing at various companies? Absolutely. Is it the norm? Nope. And I'll explain some of those factors because one of the reasons network marketing can get its bad name is because people only tell the extremely positive stories and don't tell the more realistic, uh, they don't set realistic expectations. And that's where people get their hopes way up, get very disappointed, and then go out and bitch and moan and complain. And that's where there's a lot of misunderstanding. And so I'm going to clear all that up for you so you have a real accurate picture, realistic expectations, and can start making some informed decisions. So we've talked about some of the first objections most people have. Is this a pyramid scheme? Is this shifty? Is it illegal? It is not. It is viable. And I certainly encourage you, I'll put this in the show notes to look up the Direct Sales Association. Do research on the company you're looking at with the caveat. This is very important. And this reflects and mirrors what I just said a couple moments ago. If you're going to do research on Arbon or Pampered Chef or Isogenics, or Plexus, or Mary Kay. Here's what you need to know, and this is reflective of human nature. If you go to Google and you say, how much money can I make in Isogenics? Or how much money can I make as a Beachbody coach? Or you just type in Beachbody coach. What will pop up first in any of those searches are typically a bunch of blog posts that are like, why Isogenics is a ripoff? why Pampered Chef is full of shit and you'll never earn any money. It Usually what will pop up is a bunch of blog posts written by very bitter and angry people saying it's a scam, it's bullshit, I got ripped off, blah, blah, blah. So the reason, now I'm not an SEO expert, but knowing and I'm taking an SEO course, so I'm understanding how this works a little bit better. And I actually did a podcast about this 
you should go listen to that podcast. It's called Something to the Effect of Everything You Need to Know in Life You Learned from Riding a Bicycle. This is where human nature comes in. And I really want you to think about this. Whether you ever say yes to any network marketing company or not, my job here in this show is to just educate you. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for you, but ultimately if you completely feel 1000% uncomfortable and you choose not to pursue it, that's your choice. What I do want you to know is some of these things, because I think what I'm about to tell you can help you have a different perspective in life and a different way of looking at things in life, which will benefit you. It is very typical in our adult nature to want to convince ourselves that something's too good to be true. And what I said in that podcast about everything you need to know, you, you figured out when you uh, were learning how to ride a bike. Think about when you were young and you saw kids riding bikes and you didn't know how to ride a bike. You raised your hand and said, mom, dad, I want to ride a bike. Show me how to ride a bike. And you would do anything to learn how to ride that bike. And when you were learning how to ride the bike, you'd fall down and it would seem impossible but you weren't gonna let that stop you because you wanted to ride that bike. What we do with it as adults, we see somebody who approaches us and says, you know, for example, maybe I've approached you. And I said, I am absolutely in love with this company. I've discovered these products. And for me, I think if you are active in the fitness, health and wellness space in particular, if you have a passion for fitness, health and wellness, you have influence over people. You're a trainer, you're a dietitian, you're a nutritionist, or you're just somebody who's, again, passionate about losing weight and you have a blog and you're talking about these things and you're talking about wellness and digestive enzymes and gut health and all of that stuff, the importance of stress reduction. I think it's crazy for you to not look into this as one of your streams of income because these products are exceptional. They're backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. Their compensation plan is amazing. It is human nature for somebody to hear that and go, that seems too good to be true. Like, why? Uh, why? Why is it that it's not our nature to go, for example, whoever might have approached you, I'm, I'm assuming there's some kind of friendship or maybe it's a cousin or a sister or a brother. I will also go into that too at the end, why that's maybe not your best approach to, to go to your close circle of friends. Doesn't mean you can't. But if somebody comes to you that you have a good relationship with and, and share some massive excitement and, and they say, I want you to look into this, why is, think about it. Why is it our nature that we're like, we want to find a reason why it's too good to be true. Instead of like a kid riding a bike going, this sounds awesome. I want to find a way that I can join Kelly in this venture or join Sally in this venture. This sounds fun. I love cooking. Pampered Chef, this sounds great. If I can make an extra 500 or 1500 bucks a month, that's my mortgage payment. That's awesome. Let me see how I can do. And then I can, I can like host cooking parties at my house and have friends over and get paid to do that. Like, I want to see how, how can this, let me look that, look at, look into this to make sure that this is cool. Instead, we're like, Mm, I don't think so. I don't even want to look at it. I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't like, why is that our reaction? Why do we think we can't even look into it? That's what's silly. It's nothing that's going to harm you from looking into something, from researching something. Then if you research it and you still don't like it, you could say no. And you should be able to have the, the inner strength to look at someone and go, you know what, Kelly? I really appreciate the opportunity and I understand and I respect your excitement. It's not for me and I hope you respect my decision. Just say that. If somebody says that to me, and I've had several people say that to me, I say, well, I, I accept your decision. I don't respect it because I disagree with you. And I hope you understand that maybe six months from now, I might ask you if you might be interested again, because I really believe this could be good for you, but I don't want to ruin our friendship and I won't, you know, I won't make you feel uncomfortable. I'm not going to stalk you. You know, this is optional, but hopefully you'd be okay with me six months down the line, just checking in with you. That's all. And if somebody says, please don't ever do that again, I'd be like, well, I think you're a freak, but okay. <laughs> and usually those people are the ones that are going to come back to me and go, can we talk? Because my husband just lost his job. Can we talk? I just lost my job. Can we talk? My daughter just lost her job. And then suddenly they're open to it. But going back to this again, when you start to do your research on whatever company it is that you're looking into in network marketing, just know 
that what will pop up the most are the negative, this is bullshit, this doesn't work posts. Why? Because that is what human beings are Googling and that's what human beings will click on the most. And because that's gotten, those posts have gotten the most traffic, those posts are going to rise to the top. That's the nature of the algorithms. And anybody else can tell you that. So just know when you look for that, if you want to look for a bunch of negative Nelly blog posts that someone's written about any of these companies, you will find it. If you go to YouTube and you want to find out why Beachbody is a scam, and why you can't make any money as a beach body coach, you'll find it. If you want to look up why Arbonne is a scam, why it's full of shit, you'll find it. And you know why? Typically, I'm going to say nine times out of 10, the posts or videos that you will see like that online are somebody who has joined this company, company A, company B, company C. They spent some money. And what they did is they said, here's what I'm going to do. I've got all of these friends on Facebook. I've got all of my friends at my office and I'm going to present this to them and I should make X, Y, Z money by X, Y, Z date. And so they go balls to the wall. And usually you'll see those type of people, right? That's also where network marketing can get its bad name because somebody goes in and they're like, oh my God, I can earn 10 grand a month. Hell yeah. And then they go and they plaster stuff all over social media every single day. And they are in your inbox. They're calling people. They're like, you've got to buy this, blah, 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 blah. And they're so pushy and they're so insistent and they're so impatient that everybody says no because they're not doing it right. And they want overnight results. They want to go from zero to $10,000 a month or from zero to earning a Mercedes in 30 days. And when they don't do it, when they don't get rich overnight, because they think that this is a lottery ticket, they think that this is quick fix, they think it's a shortcut. Network marketing is none of the above, period. And I'm gonna be very clear, no matter what company you're joining, but a lot of people will join and see the light at the end of the tunnel and think that they can get to the end of the tunnel overnight. And so typically these posts that you'll see online, the bad bitchy blog posts, the, the YouTube posts that are out there, those are people who have joined, had a bad experience, and they're so pissed off and they're so embarrassed that they don't want anybody else to go. They want to get back at that company. It's like if you get fired from a job, you go out and you write a bad review on Glassdoor or whatever that, that thing is. It doesn't mean that every company is perfect. It doesn't mean that there might be times that a lot of you might might join a network marketing company and work and have times where you don't earn any money and you're frustrated. That can happen anywhere. That can happen if you start your own company. That's happened to me. That's happened to me in corporate America. It's happened to me running my own company, Fitfluential, and we were a profitable seven-figure business. It's happened to me running my own consulting business. It's happened to me with clients. It happens to everybody. You go through your ups and your downs. The way that you win in making money in any industry is the way that you win losing weight consistency, persistency, and never giving up. You win over the long term. You don't get to make money just like you don't get to lose weight overnight. There's no shortcut to losing weight and keeping it off. You might do some crazy fad diet and lose a bunch of weight in a week, but you'll gain it back. Smart people know that. And so smart people know the solid way to lose weight is to do it sensibly and slowly over time and build. Same thing with making money. So if you have your eyes open and you join a network marketing company and know that what you need to do is find the right fit for you, a company that you really believe in, products that you really believe in, and you're willing to work and stick with it like weight loss, you will make money and it will compound and it will accumulate and you will build a team of people that are doing the same thing for you and they will help you because it's a leveraged sales model when you, you're making money not of, only off of your efforts, but you're bringing in a team, team member and that team member is bringing in other team members. And everybody's making commission off of this leveraged group sales model. That's smart business. And that's how you accumulate real residual income, compounded wealth over time. But the biggest mistake people make with network marketing and what I believe is what gives network marketing a bad reputation is the people who go out and, and look at the compensation plan and go, wow, I could make $250,000 a month. A lot of companies you can, okay? 
The people that are making $250,000 a month are usually in the top 1%. Just like in corporate America, just like that's representative of wealth in this country. One to 2% of people are making that amount of wealth. That's life. Don't think it's just network marketing. And that's what peeves me to no end is when people go, oh my God, I don't want to be in that business. That's where only the people at the top are making all the money. Don't kid yourself. That's, if you really look at, and, and typically what people start to get funny is, is when you tell them you will build a team. Part of, part of how you make money in most network marketing companies is you're, you sell a product to, to person A, you get a commission off selling that, process, that product to person A. That's one way to make money from, from A to B, selling from one person. The second way you make money, the second layer that goes on top of that or beneath it or beside it or whatever, is when you start to tell your friend and your friend tells her friend and you tell another friend and you start to bring in 10 or 12 friends that are also selling to other people. So then you're making a commission off of the top of that. Now, some people hear that and they go, oh, I have to bring in a team. That's, isn't that a pyramid scheme? Like they think that's the weird shifty part. Here's where you guys need to understand. If you haven't been in a sales role in your whole life, you might not be familiar with this, but I've been in corporate sales for the better part of uh, 15, 20 years, right? So I know any time that I've worked in corporate America for an organization, that's the model. You have the CEO at the top. And down below him, you have the director, you have vice president of sales, you have director of sales, you have the manager of sales, and then you've got a sales team. So the sales team is selling product to the end consumer. And the sales team, every time that Kelly on the sales team makes a sale to, let's say I used to work for a company called VHT, and I sold a virtual tour package to this office, Keller Williams. I made a commission off of that sale, okay? There were five other salespeople who were also selling to five other sales organizations, five other Keller Williams offices, right? So they each made money off of that transaction. All of those transactions totaled up. Our boss, the regional director of sales, he makes a bonus off of the, the total amount of sales. So if we hit a certain number, he's making a bonus. So he's making a percentage of those sales. He's making a percentage of what we do as a team. And then there's other kickers in there and stuff like that. His boss is making a percentage of what that regional director and another regional director and another regional director. The CEO, the CEO is making a bonus based on what the marketing team pulled in, based on what the sales team pulled in. So everybody at the top is getting a piece of what the people below them made. The difference is with network marketing is you're actually allowed, everybody at every level is allowed to leverage the teams below them and beside them. So it is a very similar model. <laughs> it's a smart model. It just makes sense. And in fact, now would probably be the appropriate time for me to use as an example. I said to you earlier, um, Rodan and Fields. I, I referenced Rodan and Fields. Now, for those of you who've been around for a while, you might remember that Rodan and Fields is a, one of the top skincare companies and, and they do have some makeup products. Like I said, I buy their lash product. Um, they have been around for years and years and years. They used to be sold in Nordstrom and they were in one of Nordstrom's top, I believe they were the top skincare brands sold in Nordstrom for years. And the two founders of uh, Rodan and Fields, who are formerly the founders of Proactive Skincare, um, started to look around retail and in different malls in America, even with Nordstrom being as successful as they are. They were looking around and going, okay, no one is shopping in malls anymore. They looked around and they saw social media and how people were engaging on social media. And they're like, how is it that people are buying today? How is today's consumer buying? And they started to look at influencer marketing. They started to look at social selling. They started to look at social media, the future of retail. I've got an entire folder here of stats on retail companies, restaurant companies, and this is pre-coronavirus nation, people. 